I am Jonathan Knight in this B-Movie Band. This movie I'm going to talk about tonight, well, I'm doing another Warlock Home Video title. And the one I'm going to talk about tonight is the one, the only, An Evening with my Grant Aunt Bedelia. Now, along with Dingleberries, this was one of two titles that, um, of the Warlock stuff that Tony sent me that I had not seen. Um, but unlike the Dingleberries, which I seen the poster and I knew about it, this one I never even heard of before. Um, so this was really obscure to me, and so I was looking forward to re-watching or even watching this one the most. Um, so I was really excited, and I was really excited, you know, to see that Josh Swire was the lead in it, who I'm, in, if you, um, watched my, um, Happy Holidays review, that I'm a huge fan of Josh's work. I think he's one of, um, Chris's, um, um, the best actors of Chris's work. Um, he's always hilarious. But, um, I was really excited about, you know, watching this. But before I get to talking about the movie, first of all, as usual, cover art, fucking amazing. Um, they did really good work with this. I mean, every Warlock title just looks amazing. But what is An Evening with My Grand Aunt Bedelia about? Well, it's about when Edith Grenhauser received a mysterious letter inviting her to the estate of her deceased grandmother, she did not expect to be the main course on a platter full of blood and mayhem. Now she must come face to face with her family's darkest secret, crusty old demon witch. Aunt Bedelia. Writer, director, Toba Larone is back to take you through the basements of hell and beyond, and then leave you screaming for more. It flicks so frightening, the warlock himself hid beneath his cloak for hours. Now, that's some scary shit right there. This movie means business. But, um, upon re you know, it was really cool is when I watched, after I watched the movie, I watched the special features, and I found out that, um, Chris Eaver was kind of hands-off on this movie. He was busy trying to get um, Sex Squatch and a couple other things out. So he left Josh Swire to write, direct, and star in it and let him go off on his own and do the movie. So, um, he trusted Josh because Josh had, you know, was, like, in my opinion, the perfect Seaver actor, you know, in a Seaver movie. Because he really understands that kind of humor and everything. So it was really cool that he gave, you know, Josh the, you know, hey, man, just go out and make the movie. I can trust you. And, um... There's a good reason why he can trust them, because this movie was a fucking blast to watch. I was really, I shouldn't say I was really surprised by it, but, you know, like I said, I didn't, I've never even heard of it before, so I really didn't know what to expect too much, but uh, um, I've watched it a couple times now, and I just had a blast. It was so much fun. First of all, Josh Swire is fucking hilarious as um, Aunt Bedelia. Every scene he's in, he is just giving it his all, and he is fucking hysterical. Also, I want to give a shout out to um, Amber Snook, I believe her name is. She plays um, Edith um, Grenhauser, the lead of the movie. Well, that's her lead of the movie. She's been in quite a few um, Chris Evers stuff. She was also in Happy Holidays and Stoinky Beach, Sex Squatch, and a couple other movies. But she's really good in this movie. She's actually really funny, too. She's really likable. Um, but yeah, those two together they were hilarious. To, you know, their whole The whole finale with those two is hysterical. Another thing I was impressed by is there's a lot of great music in this movie. A lot of familiar great music that I was not expecting some of it. And there's one scene in particular, two scenes actually, where the music just fit perfectly. Um, I usually don't spoil which the music is so I can, you can discover it for yourself. But there's a sequence where um, Edith's um, boyfriend is um, murdered by Aunt Bedelia and they play I'm Dying in Your Arms Tonight by Cutting Crew and it fit that scene so perfectly. It was such a perfect choice. Also the finale is set to the Return of the Living Dead theme and it just fits that perfectly as well. And speaking of the finale, the finale is fucking batshit insane. The whole finale is uh, takes place in the graveyard, but it's filmed on the green screen, and it's basically everything in the kitchen sink is thrown into it. There's fight sequences, there's explosions, there's farting, there's, it's, it has everything in it. And I will say that the demon masks they use for when Aunt Bedelia wants to devour a ch child or two, I thought the demon mask was really cool. Um, I don't know, I, I'm not familiar with it, if I've seen it anywhere else. But it's a really cool looking mask. I thought they uh, made a good choice. Also, I thought the makeup effects um, for, um, there's a jaw rip in the movie. I thought the makeup effects for that was actually fairly good as well. You know, it is obviously something you can see where it's, you know, attached to his face. But I thought it was pretty cool. And like I said, the finale is just so fucking crazy that it's fun. Um, and it's like, much like all the other Warlock stuff, it runs under an hour. It's 44 minutes, but it's perfect at 44 minutes. It gives you just enough story 
in entertainment value. It gives you more entertainment value in 44 minutes. Like, I think I'm just repeating myself now, but in most movies these days that come out in theaters, it's more entertaining than the new Scooby-Doo movie. That's for damn sure. That was terrible, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, this was really entertaining. Nice, fast story. A lot of fun. Some cool makeup effects. Um, and a great, great, amazing soundtrack. And like the two leads, Amber Snook and Josh Sawyer, perfection. They were so good together. And I would like to see Josh actually direct more. I think he did a really good job with this one. I would like to see more Warlock titles directed by him. He clearly has the passion for it. And anybody who's a fan of Chris's stuff knows that Josh is really good. Yeah, um just playing these goofy over-the-top characters. I just watched the Weird Z's and he was fantastic in it. But as for the special features, um, there's an introduction by the Warlock, as usual, except for one movie, and I'll be getting to that soon. Um, there's a Warlock Home Video retrospective, which is just Chris talking about what he wanted to do with, excuse me, what he wanted to do with Warlock in general. He thought, he basically was doing it as like a throwback to his old early days. Which, if you haven't seen his early day stuff, the Meter Man stuff, Friday the 13th fan films, I highly recommend checking those out. They're a lot of fun. And that Warlock stuff is basically, you know, a throwback to that stuff. Um, Chris Seaver on Grant and Fidelia, you know, basically what I said earlier, it's about, you know, him giving it to Josh to do and um, trusting Josh to do it. Um, vintage Chris Seaver, um, shot on video interview part three. As I talked with the previous disc, this is the third part of the interview that Tony did with Chris Beck in, I believe, 2012. And it's just Chris finishing off his, you know, history and all that and his thoughts on why people, some people can't get over the video look and shot on video, which um, some people just don't have an open mind enough to, you know, accept it. It's understandable. I understand shot on videos acquire taste, but, you know, some people just can't get over it. And like Chris says, like you know, people say it's only film if it's film. Film's not. There isn't really any film anymore anymore or anymore. Blah. There's no film anymore. It's you know HD digital. So whatever. Um, the original trailer, um, Warlock trailer vault for all the Warlock titles and trailers for the other SOVDehorror.com releases. So that's all the um, you know. I think I've talked about the previous reviews. You know, if you're interested in checking out any of the SOVHorror.com stuff, I recommend giving the trailers a watch so you can see when, you know, what they look like. But, as with the other world, this one was a fucking blast. And this was one of them, you know, I would actually put this one of the six, I would put it in my top three um, so far. Um, when I get to my next review, I'll probably do a ranking, but this is probably going to be in the top list. I thought this was a blast to watch. I really liked, I believe the opening... Credits music was from Troll, and it made me want to rewatch that movie instantly. Um, but I highly recommend checking this out. Watch the trailer at the end. Um, if you just like some batshit insane shot on video cheese, could do worse than this, trust me. But um, if you're interested in buying any of these titles, um, go to sovhorror.com. I will have a direct link down below. Um, and if you want, are you if you're interested in shot on video horror, shot sovhorror.com merchandise, posters, um, cups, po uh, po posters, cups, t-shirts, pillows. I'll have a direct link down below where you can buy all that. Support independent artists like Tony. He works his ass off getting this stuff out. And, and a big thank you to him for sending this my way. And a big thank you again to Chris for making. Oh, Big thank you to Josh Swire and Chris for making this. You guys just did a fantastic job, in my opinion. Um, if you like my channel, give me a thumbs up. Um, hit the little bell. Um, thanks for watching. I'm Jonathan Knight. It's meant to be me, Stay cool.